A weak light comes in through the clouds in the early morning. It is raining outside. In the rural area of Dabang, another day is just starting for the Cabral family. Joisil and Roberto have 10 children. Three of them are already married and live in the same neighborhood, like this one, always made of bamboo. It is an ordinary day in the Philippines. We are in the Panay Island, in the middle of the Visayas Islands. In this world, you live on with few essential things, and by working in the fields, you get merely subsistence. Here, you wake up every day to fight against poverty. <laughs> We wake up at 4 a.m. My wife prepares rice for the day. Then we wake our children up and let them have breakfast and go to school. At sunrise, I go to the field to work. Life is not easy. It is hard to pay out basic necessities to survive. This is our biggest challenge. Roberto works as a farmer in a sugarcane field. As many other farmers in the area, Roberto is not the owner of the field where he works. One third of the cultivation goes to the actual owner of the field. This is an unequal agreement, very similar to sharecropping, which was used back to the Spanish occupation in the Philippines. Farmers fight against it many years now by asking its abolition and demanding a reform where their rights are taken more into account. So far, they still have not been listened, and landlords did not see undermine their interests. Three children of Josil and Roberto are about to arrive at school. Their parents hope for a better future for them, far away from the hard work in the fields. It is difficult for a poor family to ensure a good education, though. You need many sacrifices. Injustice and poverty. Against these two plugs, Panay Fair Trade fights with determination. This is a fair trade organization involving five cooperatives with poor farmers and workers, but mainly women who live in marginal areas and in urban suburbs. Between eight and 10,000 families benefit from its work on Panay Island. Since its establishment in 1991, Panay Fair Trade Center created a new commercial channel for a number of local agricultural products. Among them, the most important is Mascobado, an integral cane sugar with a lot of minerals and vitamins, known in the Philippine tradition for over a century. Panay Fair Trade Center acknowledges the farmer's fundamental role throughout the productive cycle. The goal is to provide them with a safe and equal income to free them from poverty.
Furthermore, the organization assists the farmers with good agricultural practices in all steps of the production. For the Muscovado sugar, they also obtained a biological certification. Panay Fair Trade Center, supported also by donations coming from abroad, built some sugar mills in Dabang and in other six agricultural places on Panay Island. In here, the cane is pressed to get a sugary juice as a first step in the production of Mascobado. A fair price is guaranteed to all farmers and also the possibility to check the amount of cane given and the price paid in return. This way of exchanging is way different from the big industrial centers of cane collectors. Catalina Buscar worked in one of the two sugar mills in Camada. Thanks to this plant, we all have an income. People work in shift here, so everybody can earn something for the farmers that cultivate cane sugar. And for us all, is a big thing to know that our work is remunerated fairly. The muscobado sugar is not just sweet. There are some bitter grains in it. It is a really tragical reality. Panay Fair Trade Center is under attack by the paramilitary group that remains unpunished until now. From 2001 until today, the organization suffered over 13 attacks. Two of them were mortal. Romeo Capaya was murdered in the year 2014. He was a very active president in Panay Fair Trade Center, as well as a brave defender of the poor's rights. Same months after that, a worker named Dionisio Garete was also killed in one of the Camada plants where he used to work and in the same mill on a different occasion was set fire to. The fire started on a truck of this small plant and then launched inside the structure. All worries come up in Margarita Panganiban's words. She is a manager in one of the two plants on Camada. We try not to worry. We try to stay strong. After the murders and the fire, we were shocked. Thus we decided all together that we have to protect our mills because they are very important for our community. We are aware that we could die in any moment. We are always under attack. After the squeezing out of the cane, the juice undergoes various boiling steps until it gets sugar grains through crystallization. Muscovado keeps a strong flavor of molasses, which reminds of the liquid extracted from the cane.
Rough muscovado produced in the rural areas goes now to Otan, a small town close to Iloilo. In here, the headquarters of Panay Fair Trade Center are located. This is also where the sugar production ends before being exported to Italy and in other European countries beyond Japan and South Korea. At the entrance of the building, there is a monument in honor of Romeo Capaya. It is there as a warning for his murders that are still unpunished after an inaccurate investigation carried on from local authorities who were and are not interested in doing justice. However, why does it happen? At the headquarters in Otan is Mario Dalida, responsible of the last phases in the production process of Mascobado, that gives us some more explanation. Here they are threatened to, to us because we are, we are empowering the, the poor people. They don't want for us to go further, to expand further and extend more services to the farmers so that they can still suppress and curtail some rights of the poor farmers and workers. They want their interests to be maintained. In our sugar mills, the farmer is enjoying our free financing program because we provide them the finance for land preparation. We train them how to manage their sugar cane fields and we train them also organic farming. Also, we have a fixed price, yeah, fixed price to the farmers. Unlike the prices of sugar centrals, we respect human rights. We are treated women equally. More than 50% of uh, our members are women, and we did not discriminate them. We are serving the poor and marginalized farmers, and we give job or income to the jobless workers and urban poor women. In Otan, at the headquarters, women are mainly working for two different products apart from mascobado. Banana chips, fried slices of banana with sweetener, and ginger sweets. Both of them exported abroad through fair trade connections. To witness the social value of Panay Fair Trade Center and its strength in the local productive context is Hermifena Jaspe, responsible of an organization that gives help to the work in the plant. We, Banana Chips Producers Worker Association, work in shifts with other two organizations. Panay Fair Trade Center is able to provide a safe income to all participants that without this job could not survive. This is a big thing to have it in our community.
Even the ginger comes from the associated farmer's network. With its root stock, they can produce sweets for the fair trade. Panay Fair Trade Center is a threat for those who are in power. They cannot accept that farmers and workers alter the game that prefers the interests of the few. In the Philippines, the paramilitary force rages to eradicate armed rebels and drug trafficking as an excuse. Violence and persecution keep increasing. Thousands of people were killed in the country. In Panay Island, two people are considered desaparecidos, Maria Luisa Posa Dominado and Nilo Arado. Both were involved in the defense of the rights of the poor. José Eli Garachico is one of the responsible in Caratapan, an association that fights for the defense of civil rights in the Philippines. He gives a tragic picture. Uh, the situation of human rights now in the Philippines is that uh, uh, people are so poor, uh, they protest their situation, and when they protest their situation, the government uh, take extreme measures to silence them, uh, to stop their protest, and they are being even arrested, and they are being identified as uh, people who are rebels and who would take up arms against the government. Also, many of them lose even their lives. Uh, the paramilitary are now being used by the military to do what are, can be considered as their uh, dirty, uh, dirty tricks, which the military themselves uh, would not like to be identified with. Uh, here in Panay, we help uh, uh, human rights victims especially those who have been take, uh, imprisoned, arrested and imprisoned for uh, what they believe in and for standing up for their rights. Right here in front of the crowded market in Otan was murdered Romeo Capaya. At 6 p.m., in the midst of all these people. The command was organized by five people and guided by a paramilitary, all known by the police. The threat has recently reached also Ruth Fair Saldidos, president of Fair Trade Panay Foundation, an association created to support initiatives for social rights and to force the respect of laws. Ruth is accused of rebellion. To them, she had participated to an armed ambush against the army. These are unfounded accusations which aim to scare a brave women. For keeping Ruth safe, the entire fair trade world in Italy and Europe mobilized. Through collected money, she could pay for the bail in order to avoid being in jail before the result of the process that now is waiting for her. Her fate is still very unsure. Ruth asks for a meeting with the mayor of a town, Vincente Flores, and expresses her deep worries. The mayor, surprised, seems not to understand her concerns. Now the, uh, the municipality of Botón is generally peaceful. According to him, the situation is calm. Ruth insists on her point. She asks for security measures for herself and all the workers at Panay Fair Trade Center. The mayor answers that the police is already on the alert. Unfortunately, the repeated attacks to the sugar plants and the false accusation to Ruth demonstrate the opposite. It was the military who accused me. To stop me? I don't know, but I cannot stop. 
First, I'm innocent. And that's very clear. Why? Why they are doing this to us? So this is just a, for us, it's a clear picture. For the military side, we are their enemies. The situation still very insecure, uh, not only for myself, but for those who are really committed also to, to continue our demand for fundamental changes in the lives of Filipinos. We have one goal, and that is to help our farmers, urban poor women, urban poor folks, through fair trade. But we have deeper demands that we believe. Try to find solutions to these problems. Then we can really have a fair world. So this is how we practice fair trade. Therefore, we developed, we continued on our advocacy for change. <laughs>